G'day and welcome back to the Weedy Garden. Welcome back to Bush Turkey Paradise. You can see I've just come back from Denmark from a little trip away. So no one's been up in the garden for three weeks and the bush turkey has found out that no one's here. See, it's a bush turkey feather. I'm gonna keep that as a little, as a little reminder. So I asked my permaculture teacher, Jeff Lawton. And I said, Jeff, do you have any good tips about how to keep the bush turkey away? And do you know what he said? He said, well, I've heard teddy bears. They don't like teddy bears. So put teddy bears all around the fence. The more and the bigger, the better. And I've heard they don't come. They run away from teddy bears. One, two, three. If you visit Weedy's garden today, you're in for a big surprise. If you visit Weedy's garden today, you better go in disguise. For all the teddies that ever there was, are gathered in Weedy's garden because today's the day we're gonna scare the bush turkey. <laughs> I live near a little town in Australia called Kyogle. There are lots of bush turkeys in these hills. Some people call them scrub turkeys or brush turkeys, but the originis, the people who were really connected to this land and have lived here for thousands of years, they call this area Kyogle, which in the Bundjalung language, it means egg of the bush turkey. They're a beautiful bird, very prehistoric, another wonderful creation of nature, but they are destroying my garden. I'm just gonna go for a walk in the bush and I'll show you a nest. So there you go, there's a bush turkey nest right there. I know why they call them brush turkey, or the bush turkey, because they live in the bush here. Compost makers of the forest. This is an old bush turkey nest, this one here. But what happens is that the, the male he goes along and he scrapes all this leaf matter and broken twigs and bark and of course lots of dead insects and everything like this. And the male does this and he does it for he does it for weeks and weeks. And when it's ready and it's a big pile of compost, he calls out to the lady and he says, Your compost is ready, darling. And she comes along and she lays the eggs in the compost. Because that heat generated from the composting warms the eggs up and incubates them for her. So I'm down by the creek now and there's another bush turkey nest just up here. I remember seeing the male build this one about two years ago. So none of the parents are sitting on the eggs, although the male, he does hang around and protect the nest from snakes and goannas that want to have the eggs, of course. But when the babies hatch, they crawl up through a meter of forest soil to be born. And then once they come out, they can fly already. And the parents, they don't hang around because the babies, they remember everything out of instinct, which is their cell memory, which is the, the memory of the mother and the father combined they have already when they're born. And, and they're an amazing animal and I don't want to harm them. So they're in my garden eating my root fruits. They're smart, they want to have the nice food. I understand that, but, and I don't want to kill them. So we're going to figure out a way to keep them out of the garden without killing them. In the spring, early this spring, there was a whole family of them over there on the hill at the neighbor's place. And actually, I thought they were pretty cute. Everything was doing great up here in my food forest on the hill. The cassava were covered in photon particles every day. The roots were growing and stretching through the soil. They were almost ready to harvest. And I was going to make my first cassava pancake from the weedy garden, like the very first one ever. The turkeys were starting to come and take some, but I thought there was plenty for all of us. And then I had to leave the garden and fly to Denmark for a photo shoot and visit my family. I was away for three weeks. So the bush turkey's been visiting uh, the weedy garden while I've been away and it's demolished my taro and it's demolished my yams. They're all dead. And they've demolished the cassava and the yakon and they're in the process of demolishing the small trees as well. 
Look at that. They've just like dug up all the cassava. And it's just horrible. It's pretty pretty sad to see. It's pretty dread. And we have some cassava here as well, which is all gone. They just ate it all. And they're just digging in, digging all the ground up to find the roots, following the roots. And then they've killed the, the coffee tree as well. The Kenyan coffee. It's gone. That's all the bush turkeys work. So we're gonna have a teddy bear picnic up in the weedy garden this episode. We're gonna do a little experiment to see if teddy bears can keep the bush turkey away. If you look around the garden, my cassava, my yakon, my taro has been demolished. It's sweet potatoes, forget about the sweet potatoes. Um, arrowroot, yam, all the root vegetables, the bush turkey is demolished. The, the cassava's growing in there and it's going in underneath my peanut butter tree. So that's no good. It's affecting the roots from the peanut butter tree. See, that's probably a root from the peanut butter tree. So we don't want that. So I'll come and fix that up in a, in a couple of days. So I called out to all the teddy bears in the community. So I put the teddy bear in the bed where the sweet potatoes were. Oh, did you see that? The bush turkey looked at it and then he didn't come back the rest of the day. And I thought, yeah, beauty, that worked. But the next morning when I came back, the teddy bear was covered in dirt. Yeah. So I took some photos and sent them to Jeff. And I wrote a text. And I said, next time someone asks you if the teddy bears keep the bush turkeys away from the garden, you can tell them, no, it doesn't. And he wrote back and he, and he said, tie them on the fence and put them up on stakes. I think they need to be up in the air a bit. I can see the wallabies come into the garden as well, but luckily the wallabies don't eat my vegetables. Today I'm gonna to see if I can do something to get these bush turkeys away. So today I'm gonna to put some bamboo up on the fence and hang them out over the garden to see if that works. So I'm just gonna like hang them on some fishing line First I've got to make a little, a little ring. And I've done that by just cutting a bit of wire and I cut it on an angle so it's nice and sharp. And I just pinch the top of Teddy's head, sorry Ted. And then I just put it through the top of Teddy's head like that and turn it around and give it a turn. So like that. So I've got a little ring and I'll chop that off. And then I'll get a bit of fishing line just cut a bit off. And then tie it onto the end of my bamboo fishing line. Like that. And then I just tie it through the thread it through the top of the little ring that I just made. And then I've got a little teddy that can hang on a little fishing line like that, see? See? 
hopefully you can scare the bush turkeys away when it's swinging like that. So I'll go and put that on the fence now and I'll do, I'll do all of them so I can put them on the fence, but let's go. I'll put this one up first. I think it needs to be a bit lower. It needs to be like hanging about here, I think. Just make that fishing line a bit longer. Okay, Teddy, you're on a mission, mate. Okay, Teddy. Okay, one. You gotta hang him up, see? I've got a little bit of wire around his head and I've got a bit of fishing line here and it's put onto a stick which is hanging over my fence here. Just like a little, just like I caught a little teddy bear on the fishing line. And what happens is he just sits there and he turns around slowly <laughs> and he's always moving. The bush turkey is, is down there in the bush behind. Eh? And I've got them all along the fence line, if you can see them all down there. They're all turning around in different positions. Kind of just checking out the environment like this. And I reckon the bush turkeys are down there and they're down there hiding and they're looking up and he goes, all right, he's looking, he's looking. Okay, all right, he's not looking. Oh, hang on, the other one's looking. Hang on, he's not looking. Now, okay, now let's go. Oh, hang on, the other one's looking. See, this one's turning around. See, now, he's looking at you. See, <laughs> so you gotta hang him up, and I haven't seen a bush turkey in 11 days now. I've got a time-lapse camera set up sort of where you are, and uh, filmed where the bush turkeys were coming in every morning and there was like eight on one frame at one point. And the next day, I put these up and <laughs> haven't seen a bush turkey since. I only heard them. I've only heard them down there in the bush. So I'm pretty sure. So, but you guys, you can go ahead and do that. Like that, hang them up, you know, a couple of inches off the ground so they can turn around. And you gotta think about when it rains as well. When it rains, they get wet and they get heavier. So they end up touching the ground. So you've got to hang them up a little bit so even though it rains and they get wet, they still turn around. Okay. So as an extra precaution, I put some mirrors around the garden as well because I heard that it also helps to keep the bush turkeys away. Although none have been in, if they do come in, they'll meet a mirror. And what happens is they're very territorial. So they'll, they'll see the mirror and they'll see themselves and they'll, they'll think it's another bush turkey. So they'll come up and they'll go, pick, pick. And they'll go scratch, scratch, and they'll go rawr, rawr, like this up to the bush turkey, and and it'll be so persistent that at the end of the day they give up and they go they go away. But I haven't seen any bush turkeys in my garden, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something. Hope it helps you keep bush turkeys away from your garden. Have a nice day, and I'll catch you later. Ha, ha, ha.